This week on Total Outdoor Pursuit, we're going to be taking a road trip to the southwest. Heading down to Texas and Oklahoma, we're going to start off going out hunting with a guy we've never met before by the name of Michael Cantrell. We're going to be going after coyotes, hogs, bobcats, raccoons. If it's still in season, we're going to be chasing it. We might even find ourselves on patrol for corn thieves. And keep in mind, some of what happens at hog camp stays at hog camp. Then we're going to head up to Oklahoma. We're going to be doing a little bit of paddlefish fishing. Jason went out with a guy by the name of Captain Dave Clark a few weeks back, took his family out and said, man, you guys have to try this. It's pretty wild. So we don't know what's in store for us, but we're looking forward to it. It should be a fun time. Total Outdoor Pursuit is about more than just watching us hunt and fish. We want to be the show that you turn to to learn new tips and strategies from us, other experts, other outdoorsmen and women across the country that will help you have better success in the field. So tune in every week and take your pursuit of the outdoors to the top. Hey, this is Jason with Total Outdoor Pursuit Television. We're in Comanche County, Texas, hunting uh, wild hogs, bobcats, coyotes. Uh, we're with my friend Michael Contrell. I got Marty here with us and his friend Mark and Mike, and uh, my wife Lottie, and she's not, I don't know why I'm looking around because nobody's next to me. I'm dead on the ground. We will have to bury you out here. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> brought in an Illinois flag? <laughs> Indiana. I was going to bring him a Buckeye flag. Shit. <laughs> what, what, to get the fire started or what? <laughs> oh, oh, ouch. <laughs> he has about 240 acres here of low fence property in the hill country of Texas. Great for turkey, deer, and uh, wild hogs. So, uh, I think it's good for wild hogs. Well, Comanche is, um, Comanche is a special place. Uh, first time out here, I fell in love. Uh, been hunting out here seven years now. You got some apples here too, Mike. You leave them in there too. Maybe. Actually, hold on. Let me, let me put some stuff in that deep freezer right quick. Let's go and tell for the first time. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. It's pretty rough, you know. We, uh, it's, a, it's to get away from civilization and come out and live, live like a predator. I feel like I'm burning up. Uh, that's that Texas sun. Yeah, oh yeah. Wait till, wait till about June, July, and August. Oh, hell no. <laughs> hell, you can just stack the shit up here. That's for you. You can leave it there. You sure? Yeah, yeah, No mice or nothing? I guarantee you ain't no animal going to come around here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get in contact with Michael? How did you guys meet? Well, we were sitting at the local bar, and he was talking about freaking coons. Oh, they were stealing his bait. Stealing his freaking bait. And then that gentleman, Jack, Came in and, just... and then his buddy Daniel came. <laughs> <laughs> he was all over from there. <laughs> yeah, can you tell us a little bit about how you met Jason? Well, me and Hauser, uh, we met online. Uh... <laughs> I got to stop right there. <laughs> I like this person's interest. <laughs> Profile picture was exceptional. <laughs> You know, down in Texas, baiting for hogs is completely normal. It's a standard practice. People are trying to thin the population, so setting out bait for the hogs is not a big deal. First night, we're out setting bait, and all of a sudden Michael says, watch out, we got some corn thieves. Yeah, after we, uh, we put out some bait and... Mike said, you just watch. There'll be some coons showing up, and sure, well, I almost said sure as shit. Oh, boy. Where's that fox, bro? There's two of them. Three of them. Hold on, hold on. They're at the feeder. You're good. Hold up, hold up. Give him a minute, give him a minute. Okay, I'll kill him. Where's 
my drink. Yeah, sure. It's Bee Bay. <laughs> You're the only one with a gun out right now, Bee Bay. When I shine the light, does your camera pick it all up? Yeah. Oh, dude. It's dead. It's dead yeah. on a board. Worthless. <laughs> <laughs> How did the uh, raccoon... <laughs> How was the raccoon hunt? Let's get some details on that. Pretty wild time. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> Hey, everybody came back alive. No, yes, no we did. No bullet holes. That's what, what more can you ask for? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> what happened last night? Sometimes what happens at coon camp. He's right there. Do you really got your ears covered? Mm -hmm. I'm about half deaf as it is. There's too many rounds going on. Huh? I'm half <laughs> deaf as it is. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Came across a couple coons, able to shine him with the green light. Got a couple good shots on him. Um, I think we'll be making some coon hats. <laughs> <laughs> Morning hits, we're ready to go out to the stands. Gonna do a little bit of hog hunting, should be fun. Hey, we're down here in Central Texas, going after some bacon, hunting with rifles. These shots could be anywhere from 20 yards to 200 yards. Hopefully we'll get some action, get some of these hogs coming out before it gets too warm. See if we can get some bacon on the ground here. It should be about prime time. Yep, yep, it should be coming. It was different because I've always hunted alone and having somebody in a blind it just makes the time go faster, especially if you're not seeing anything. We had a good time. Mike had to go take a dump. And that's why you didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> and things were pissing right in front of our feeder, Marty. <laughs> yeah, that part was true. Hey, Michael said it was okay. Hopefully we'll get some bacon on the floor pretty soon. And why do you use the truck to uh, to set out the bait? Is there a strategy behind that? Uh, it's just easier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mike and Hawkeye hunting right at the other end of this field here. Kind of got this whole area covered. They're on one corner of the woods. I'm on the other. Probably about four or five hundred yards separates us. They've got two rifles. One of them is an AR. And I've seen the way Hawkeye shoots, he likes to squeeze that trigger, so stick in some bacon. So if they shoot first, it is probably gonna scare the crap out of me. Dropping the bacon. I'm hoping that I shoot first. I mean, I'll be glad if they do. Don't get me wrong. But I think it'd be a lot better to scare the crap out of them than to have them scare the crap out of me. Poking the pork. in the pork. Whacking the bacon, cracking the bacon, stacking the bacon. Mike, I think, put us in a wrong blind for a specific reason. He doesn't like Ohio guys. He's from Michigan. Gar hold. <laughs> Gar hold us, that's it. I should probably stop talking and start hunting. It's just God's country down here. It's just beautiful. Didn't see anything this morning as far as shooting, but it was still just beautiful to see the sunrise and just uh, just the animals working the land. Meep, meep. Mike, nice enough to let us come out here and hunt on his land. You know, brought up an idea that there's a old wall, old mud hole down there, and here in a little bit we might walk down there and 
see if we can't rustle something up. Is that? This one here? Yeah, that's all. I'm sorry, how it's got almost a horseshoe shape. Mm -hmm. Look at that little piglet in the big one. That's a big hog right there. For a whole weekend, we threw the book at these hogs. I mean, we sat in the morning and the evening in blinds over baited areas. We went out after dark with spotlights. Heck, we even tried to still hunt the bedding areas in the heat of the day. Nothing was happening. Hogs weren't showing up. That's just the way it goes sometimes. But the important part is we made some new friends, made a lot of great memories, and we protected the corn too. Yeah, we had a great time coming out here. I mean, we really want to thank Michael for letting us come out. It was awesome. Make sure and check out his place, pureinstincthunting.com, and you can also find him on Facebook, too. Really good site, a lot of information, a lot of cool hunts, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get out with him sometime in the future again. We had a blast running around with Michael for the weekend. But I'm telling you what, we were up until two or three in the morning every single night and we were wore out. We needed some rest. It's time to hit the road, head up to Oklahoma. We checked into the hotel, finished filling out our police report about the guy that tried to attack us with the ax and woke up the next morning refreshed and just ready to go paddlefish fishing. Hey, this is Marty with Total Outdoor Pursuit. In this week's episode, we're gonna be doing something really cool. We're going fishing for paddlefish, also known as spoonbills. These are like prehistoric dinosaur looking fish. We've never seen anything like it where we're at, so it's really cool. We're going out with Dave Clark from fishonok.com. We'll put it on the screen throughout the episode. Dave Clark guides fishermen, takes them out after paddlefish, and if you have never tried it before, you have to give it a try. It's just something really cool. We start fishing for them in late December. The water starts warming up. They start coming up the channels. They get bigger and it gets more fun. They get more concentrated. We were watching the uh, fish craft there and I'm telling you what, these fish are just stacked in there. It's crazy how many come yeah. in. They're fun to watch on the locator. Sometimes if the, if the locator hits them just right, you can even see them in the water with their mouths open. They got such huge mouths. They eat plankton, but you can't catch them on regular rod and reel. The only way to really catch them is snagging for them. One fish alone will wear you out. It's uh, pretty intense. Well, that first fish that I hit into, it was like a ton of bricks at the end of the pool. Trying to get the pull out of the rod holder, that alone's a challenge of keeping a hold of it. Like bass fishing in Indiana. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come meet me. Come meet new BFF. Oh, come on up. Oh, he just stopped. Changed his mind? Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, chump. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, I made him mad. They test your arms. You definitely, your endurance will be tested. Yeah, yeah. 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 he didn't feel like it at first. was you can't explain it these fish are just they're prehistoric giants 
How is the paddlefish population out here? Pretty healthy population? It's a real healthy population right now. The wildlife department keeps fine tuning the regulations. Used to you could keep all you wanted every day. Then they went to three fish a day uh, for a while and that, that went along pretty good. And then we had some poachers coming in to take the eggs for caviar and stuff. So now they fine tune it to where you can only keep one per day. And when you keep him, you gotta quit fishing. Yeah. Uh, but you can keep two per year. But you can catch as many as you want. That's just all you gotta, that's all you can keep. Um, once you catch one, you gotta fill in the information on your permit. And then when you get back home, you gotta call it in like you would a deer or something other for a deer tag. Yeah, so they monitor it really close. They monitor really close. Whether you're gonna keep one or not, you have to have the permit. Paddle fishing can either be, I mean, it's like fishing. It can be either real boring for a while and then all of a sudden the poles are going down and the drags are ripping out. And the hybrid striper fishing the same way when I go there. I have rods and all these rod holders and you might be sitting there for 30 minutes, not a bite, and then all of a sudden all the rods go down at once. <laughs> it goes you know? crazy at once. And it goes crazy. Yeah, I know today we had several moments where it was just quiet. Everybody just kind of almost gets lulled for a second and then all of a sudden mass chaos broke out on the yep. boat again. Uh-oh. Double? Shoot, shoot, shoot. Twofer. That one came off, didn't you? Yeah. Either came off one. This is off. This is my fish, Hawkeye! <laughs> you took the wrong pole. I did, didn't I? Are you shaking or is it the fish shaking? Fish. <laughs> I'm not sure. It looks like your arm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good job. Wrestle him. I'll get him. Holy. Phew. <laughs> giving that fish a bear hug. <laughs> That's yeah. the Ohio way to hold a paddlefish, apparently. <laughs> yeah, got him up, though. Holy. 52. 52. <laughs> wow. You guys made fun of me because the arms were shaking a little bit. I tried to blame it on the pole. They weren't buying it. Thank you, baby. I was trying to better release than that, but it <laughs> <laughs> wore out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, that's, that's the most fun a man should have with his pants on. <laughs> My biggest was 52, then the other two were about 30, and then another 20, so you're looking at 130 pounds of fish in a matter of hours. It was just unbelievable. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, cow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah! Let's weigh him. <laughs> if you're asking me, it takes a lot more skill to snag a little tiny fish than it does a big, huge target fish. Well, after catching that little fish, the guys are making fun of me, so I've got to do something to redeem myself. Oh, oh. oh come on, get on out of there. Jeez. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh boy. Oh my goodness gracious. Marty made up for it. That's a fish. <laughs> Look at the gut on that thing. Good job, Marty. Do you guys notice that I'm sitting down? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, I tell you what. That one was winning for quite a while. Whew. That is 
is awesome. Fifty-six. Woo! Good job. Thank you. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, here we are. My second fish, fifty-six pounds. This is unreal. Fishonok.com, Oklahoma. Check it out. Captain David Clark will put you on the fish, and I've never caught a fish even remotely close to this. I can barely even lift him up while we're talking here, so this is awesome. Set him back down and take a break for a minute. Let's put this big girl back in the water, because my muscles are running out of strength here. Oh boy, I'm wore out. Tell me a little bit about your guide service. It's fishonok.com, and what all do you go out for? I mainly, at this time of the year, January through March, mid-April, we'll do a lot of paddle fishing and uh, some cat fishing. As the spring comes around, then I start switching over to, to the hybrid stripers here in Oklahoma and regular striper fishing. So you're basically active for a lot of different species of fish and all through the year at different points. Pretty much. We'll, 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 switch, we'll switch over here now, paddlefish, middle April or end of April to the hybrid stripers and stripers. And that'll go through June and then it kind of slows down in the real hot months. And then in early fall, the hybrid stripers start picking back up again through December. And it's a real good fishery. All right, we had a great time. I mean, my arms are wore out from catching fish. Check it out, Dave Clark, fishonok.com. In Oklahoma, he goes for a wide variety of fish and big fish too. So if you are not used to catching big fish, you are gonna find out what it feels like. So we wanna thank you. It's been a great time. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned next week and see what we're up to then. Just get one more thing here. A dance, a fish dance. Yeah, you can do the fish dance too. <laughs> he runs a Lawrence, which I do up in Lake Erie. It's his just makes my five inch look like a giant screen TV. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about electronics still, right? <laughs> I said Lawrence. <laughs>